Okie dokie. Let's move on. Our next guest is smarter than all of us combined, and I, I mean it. So let's listen up and enjoy it. Please welcome Google's Diane Green and our moderator, Matt Burns. I'm not entirely sure why I get the extremely intelligent people. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it, but it's an honor to have you here, Diane. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah, it's really great to be here. This is your first time at Disrupt. Yes. And you're coming on a packed day. Packed day, and I just wanted to spend all my time out there. It was all the booths, and it, it was pretty neat. Well, I won't keep you very long, but I do have you for 20 minutes, and I want to get through. You have some recent news with Evernote. And the topics for the day has been machine learning. And then, of course, there's the normal talk about how can Google beat Amazon? So we got to touch on that, too. That's a good one. Great. So let's start with Evernote. What did it take to get their business? <laughs> um, you know, what we're finding is when we can really engage with a company about what they're doing either on-prem or in the cloud, and we get our engineers together, uh, and they look at what we have and they realize we're the right bet. We've got everything they need and we're going to keep them, you know, on the forefront. And in addition with Evernote, we can actually partner with them, which is something we're seeing increasingly with pretty much every customer. There's a way to partner. And we are totally embracing, you know, now that everything's in the cloud, we can all work together in an unprecedented way. It's very exciting. So. Sure. Uh, it was pretty quick working with them, and uh, we're really thrilled to have them. I guess we should take a step back and say what it is. Uh, today, you announced that Evernote is bringing their 200 million users to the right. Google Cloud platform. I think 5 billion attachments and notes. And Do you use yeah. Evernote? I, yes, I have an Evernote account. Do you have to say that now? Excuse me? Do you have to say that? No, I don't have to say that. <laughs> I'm not the best at using all, all, I'm kind of an old fashioned, little bit of a paper person, but I, I do what I can in the cloud. I get that. Generally, I have a notebook when I do interviews, <laughs> but I lost that notebook last night, so I had to rewrite all these questions on these cards. Yeah. So I, I get that. So Evernote was running their platform on their own servers. They still are, and, and security is paramount. Privacy of their data is paramount. So we worked a lot with them around you know, showing them how that would be something they could completely rely on. It, you know, it's a big step to go from, because they were a cloud company from the beginning, but mm -hmm. back when they did it, there wasn't really a place to, put, to, to, to go to the public cloud. And uh, so you know, they'll, they'll be able to innovate faster partnered with us innovating on the back end for them. Sure. And it's a good thing, yeah. So have you found, is there a particular point when it makes sense for a company to move from the private cloud, their own servers, to the public cloud, like Google Cloud Platform or AWS? Is there one point? Is there a switch? I, you know, I think, <laughs> I honestly believe I don't know why anybody would try and run their own data center today. I, I, you know, now that I like totally understand what, you know, our data centers, which, you know, you just couldn't begin to do what we do in our data centers without, you know, our scale. You know, we, mm -hmm. we spent $10 billion in CapEx last, last year. And, you know, it's, it, it, when you have that scale, when you have that kind of security, 650 people full-time on security, I sure. don't know why. But, but what people, you know, I think it's happening very quickly right now. I actually wouldn't mind if it slowed down a little bit. And, and I think everybody realizes, oh, I can be more secure in the cloud. And actually, I can spend less money and I can let someone else innovate in areas that I can take advantage of. I can partner with an innovator, and I can focus my innovation on my core competence for my products and my customers. And really, that's what's going on. Why would you want it to slow down, the innovation? <laughs> I don't want the innovation to slow down. I 
This is the biggest thing I've ever seen in my career, and it is the fastest growing thing I've ever seen in my career. And I'm working the hardest I've ever worked in my career. And you've had quite a career. You started a streaming video company <laughs> in the mid 90s, and let that sink in for a second. And that was sold to Microsoft for how much? Uh, 75 million. That was the basis for their media player. We were pretty ahead of the bandwidth. Right, so that was number one. And then number two, you started VMware during the first dot com era. Yeah, I had an interlude there where I actually helped an ad serving company, AdForce, that became Images, that got bought by, I, I left them mm -hmm. uh, to found VMware, and they went public like four months later, and then they got bought by CMGI, and then they got, uh, they got bought by, um, uh, uh, eventually double click, uh, net gravity and then double click and a little history lesson in ad serving and uh, so I did, I helped them and then I did VMware, yeah. And VMware was the basis of virtual machines. You started that whole revolution and what my point here is, and you're calling the cloud bigger than any of that stuff. Oh yeah. Why? Well, so, so VMware was f fantastic. What an adventure. But, and it was a paradigm shift. I mean, it was a new, and it was an enabler for, for much of what we do in the cloud to mm -hmm. you know, separate uh, the, the hardware from the software and get this level of indirection in there, which enables you to do really big cloud stuff. Sure. But, um, the, uh, the cloud is the entire, the entire IT industry is moving to the cloud. Sure. And everything, the entire stack. I mean, the data centers there, the hardware's there, the compute, the storage, the networking, mm -hmm. you know, the underground fiber cables, the, the, uh, the containers, the, 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 you know, the container management, the databases, the data analytics, the machine learning. You're very excited about this. It's like I've never, yeah. Sure. Fun. And you're competing against Amazon, AWS, and Microsoft, and yeah. several others. And you've said in the past that when Google gets in the door, because of its pricing and its technology, you often win those contracts. And I actually don't think it's the pricing. I actually think it is, we are able to be extraordinarily cost effective because we run our data centers so cost effectively mm -hmm. and so greenly. I think we're carbon neutral. And, but we, um, I think it's how we partner with our customers, sure. engineer to engineer, good engineers to good, with good engineers. But it's also the excellence of our products where we have equivalent products, you know, our virtual machines boot instantly, you know, you can talk between them instantly, uh, the number of rows we can process, how we automate laying out your data. You know, we have a lot of sort of excellence in our products and we're, um, you know, we have all the table stakes now for the enterprise, you know, identity and regulatory. Sure. Are those products good enough to get banking to the public cloud? We are now able to uh, have customers that are regulated. Yes, we, do. What, we have some. What was the shift? What had to happen to make that we, happen? We had to do user managed encryption keys. We had to do roles, identity and access management, all the audit logging, all the FedRAMPS uh, certification, the HIPAA, you want me to keep going? No, I, I really <laughs> don't, no, I, I appreciate it though. So a lot of work, right? Yeah. Is that gonna get PayPal's business? Is that what? Is that gonna get PayPal's business? Well, I don't know. There's a, there's a rumor that PayPal is investigating using your service to, to host their platform. Yeah, yeah, well PayPal's a great company. Would you like to have them on your platform? Um, Between I, me and you, is PayPal moving to Google? Is PayPal what? Moving to the Google Cloud platform. Um, between me and you, that's like for PayPal to let you know or not. Fair enough, I get that. Let's see what we else we have here. Now, you showed up earlier today, and this is your first disrupt, but today has had a theme between it. Nearly every panel has talked about machine learning. Is machine learning going to be bigger than cloud computing? 
you know, cloud, the cloud is what's making machine learning and AI possible. Great. Sure. You know, if you think about it, machine learning, I mean, it was image.net where there was sort of this group collaboration around identifying images when everybody realized the power of these neural nets and machine mm -hmm. learning, okay? It was because everybody could have a shared database in the right. cloud. And then the more data you have, the better the machine learning is. And now it's just, you know, accelerating the research and what we're able to do. And so it's the cloud, it's having all that data, it's the mobile access to get all that data, it's all the sensors, and, and people learning how to save the data and mark what's right, what's a good outcome and what's a bad outcome. And, and now, and, and, but the machine learning is, is definitely changing everything. I mean, the insights we're getting, we can't get as humans. Let's take this to a different level. If a startup out here is trying to build a platform, what could they use machine learning for? Give me some examples. Well, so, so like at Google, we're trying to bring it to, our, to startups in every way we can. So we kind of have kind of smart data as a service that we're increasingly mm -hmm. rolling. You know, we have image recognition. We have machine tra uh, language translation. We have natural language processing. We have speech recognition, and we're going to keep, you know, we have maps, APIs, weather stuff. We have all these things that a startup can use. Right. Okay. As an API. And then we have, of course, we open sourced our machine learning framework that a startup can use, TensorFlow. Uh, and when they want to get serious about it, we have specialized processors that give you an order of magnitude uh, performance advantage, which saves you money. And then, uh, and also lets you uh, learn, you know, it's sort of what let AlphaGo win because it could look ahead so far and so quickly. Can we talk about that real quick, AlphaGo? That's absolutely fascinating to me. Yeah. I tried to play that game <laughs> and I couldn't get it. Have you ever played Go? Uh, a little bit. I, I'm, I'm not going to advertise myself as an AlphaGo <laughs> player. How did, or why did Google build an AI platform to play a game? Well, I think DeepMind is the group that did that, and what they were looking for was a well-defined, with a well-defined set of rules, problem that people did not believe was solvable with a computer because of the number of combinations. You know, unlike chess, where there's, you know, more of a finite number of, mm -hmm, of things course. you can evaluate. So it was just a great, uh, uh, well-defined problem. There was a set of, you know, well-defined outcomes for games, and then, and so it was a great problem to prove out, you know, the e efficacy of, of the machine learning. And then what they were able to do is really cool: is they were able to start playing two programs playing each other to generate more data, to generate more outcomes to learn from. And I think from there is where you get into will the robots take over the world <laughs> argument. Uh, not anytime soon, yeah. So there's several different major AI platforms right now. Are we in the beginning stages of an arms race of sorts? Well, you could call it an arms race. I mean, we're trying to bring it to people everywhere in the world. We're trying to bring it to, we, we actually think if we can bring it to startups all over the world, it's actually going to fuel startup economies all mm -hmm. over the world because it is such a major advantage when you can do this get these insights, and uh, so we're trying, you know, we're working on how to automate it and make it easier to use so you don't have to have all the expertise because uh, people are learning. I just, <laughs> I'm on the, um, I work with MIT a lot, and I just heard, like, you know, they, their classes in machine learning are just so, they can't, you know, they're at capacity, and they have 400 people in a class. Stanford has the same thing, you know, every, you know, and then the online classes are the biggest classes ever. Sure. So we have course. a lot of people learning about machine learning in the world. It's what are you most excited good about? Reason. You've given a lot of broad examples, but when you look at machine learning personally, <laughs> what are you most excited about? Well, I don't even think I know what I'm gonna be most excited about, but the, you know, in health, it's, it's really yeah. obvious already how it's gonna transform. I mean, already we, at Google they've shown uh, they can look at radiology images and, and diagnose a fracture better than a doctor. They can look at retina scans and diagnose diabetes better. 
um, you know, any kind of image analysis, you, you know, we can really help doctors and patients, you know, quite a bit. And as we get medical records shareable and in the cloud, uh, uh, you know, it'll just transform healthcare. And as people, you know, take data on themselves and get that in the cloud and so forth. So that's just a giant uh, exciting area. But, but there's, you know, can I tell, I don't know if you want me to, we just did something around energy savings in our data centers. Oh, that's great, I wanna hear about that. I do, I'm serious. You wanna that, hear about that? I do, that okay. did come out sarcastic and I apologize, but I do wanna hear why your data centers are so efficient. So they were efficient already because we, they use a lot of power and you want to optimize. Uh, you know, they're just humongous football field style buildings and then another one and then another how many, one. How many are there now? Uh, I don't know if I know. We have pops and we have regions and we have, but we are, and we're now kind of able to roll them out at about one a month you know, subject to demand, but um, today, I, uh, maybe 25, I'm not sure, positive. Sorry, Dan. Sorry, but um, anyhow, don't quote me on that. <laughs> um, so, I, I get in so much trouble when I say a number incorrectly. Um, uh, Talking about efficiency. The, um, what we did was, and this was not a hard machine learning problem, really, per se. Mm -hmm. And so we took all the inputs for the pumps and the chillers and, you know, all the, the weather, the layout of the data center, uh, the loads in the data center, mm -hmm. some, I don't know, over 200 inputs. And we um, ran machine learning on it. And here, you know, these data centers that we minimize the power, we are moving the fans around to see if maybe that'll help and so on. Anyhow, we did this and we got 40% reduction in cooling power, which was 15% power reduction overall. And Just that was thanks to machine learning. And that was purely machine learning. Now, Diane, we have one minute left here, and that, okay. that was a fantastic story. But say you get in trouble sometimes for saying things. Google or Alphabet is not the same as VMware. What's been the biggest cultural difference between I don't, the two? You know, it's not that I get in trouble, but people that own these numbers care about them, and they should care about them, so I hear from them if I say them wrong. So I try and be careful. Oh, I appreciate that. Yeah. But yeah. The, the question still stands. What's the difference you've seen the most from VMware to, to Google? Well, scale. I mean, VMware was big. I think it was seven, 8,000 people when I left. Mm -hmm. This is... there. Th you know, the same quality of engineers, which I love, phenomenal engineering, uh, you know, technology company that, and that wants to work with customers. We're really excited now about working with customers. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what the cloud is enabling. And, uh, but it's definitely, uh, you know, it's a 16-year-old company that's built up a lot of best practices that I've gotten to learn about, but, you know, they just do a phenomenal job, and they're, they're very principled, and I like all that. And, uh, you know, I just enjoy working with great people and building things, so I'm, it feels not that dissimilar from good. VMware. Good. Is it a good fit? Are you going to stay there a for good, a while? Uh, yeah, it's a, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm here on a big project. I'm not going to, you know, and I'm excited about this project. I'm, you I'm, know. Well, I'm excited yeah. that you came. We tried okay. for years to get okay. you here. Diane, thank you so much. Okay. Let's give her a round thank of applause.